Welcome to Shujin Academy VGM Club. I am Count Professor Tom, your faculty sponsor. Today's opening track is Within These Castle Walls from Castlevania II, Simon's Quest, composed by Kinichi Matsubara, Satoe Terashima, and Koji Murata. It's spooky season, and that means I'm doing a Halloween episode. Originally, this episode was going to be all music from horror-themed games like Castlevania, Splatterhouse, Resident Evil, Silent Hill, Darkstalkers, etc. However, I made the mistake of starting with Castlevania, and that franchise had so many good tracks. Way too many good tracks. So many good tracks that the Castlevania games quickly shoved everything else out of the way, and even after that, the sheer volume of songs made it so that this episode wound up being super duper long, and there were still a ton of great songs I wanted to play. So I'm going to do a bonus episode of all the tracks that didn't make it here. Maybe next year I'll do the other horror games as their own episode. I picked some of the songs on this episode because they sounded like Castlevania. The series has its own recurring themes and motifs. I chose some other songs on this episode because they didn't sound like Castlevania. I think it's important to show off the ways that this series has some tonal range. I'm not going to cover every game in the series or even every system the series has appeared on. There's just too much ground to hit everything, so I'm taking a greatest hits approach and covering the most well-liked games in the series. That means I'm skipping Castlevania 64 and also Castlevania Judgment. I'm going to go in chronological order, so my starting point is the NES games in the series. Our first music block starts with Stalker Armory from the original Castlevania, composed by Kinuyo Yamashita and Satoe Terashima, followed by The Silence of the Daylight from Castlevania II Simon's Quest, composed by Kinichi Matsubara. And then it'll be Mad Forest and then Deja Vu Vampire Killer, all from Castlevania III Dracula's Curse, composed by Hidenori Maezawa, Jun Funahashi, and Yuki Morimoto. If you're a big VGM fan, you'll be happy to know I'm using the Famicom Disk System versions of those Castlevania III tracks. Everyone considers the FDS soundtrack to be the definitive version, and I am no exception. All right, let's go do some whippin'.
But wait, there's more! The original Castlevania was developed in parallel with an MSX computer game called Vampire Killer, which uses the same soundtrack, but implemented on the MSX hardware. It also plays similarly, but instead of being a straight platformer, there are some exploration elements as well. Vampire Killer could arguably be called the first game to put the Vania in Metroidvania. It's not a great game, but it is interesting, and hearing some of these older songs run through different hardware is fun, so I'm going to play a few tracks from it. We'll start with Vampire Killer, a classic series tune that features such strong composing that you get a badass feel from it, even on 1986 sound hardware. That'll be followed by Wicked Child, and then we'll close out our tiny little block with Black Knight, which is the boss theme. As with the NES Castlevania, all songs here are composed by Kinuyo Yamashita and Satoe Terashima. Next up, let's head to the Game Boy. Like a lot of franchises that were big on the NES, Castlevania had a few Game Boy titles that were side stories from the original games, and so we're going to hear Battle of the Holy, Stage 1 BGM, from Castlevania The Adventure, composed by Shigeru Fukutake, Norio Hanzawa, and Hidehiro Funauchi. 
That'll be followed by Psycho Warrior Rock Castle from Castlevania II Belmont's Revenge, composed by Hidehiro Funauchi. I really like Funauchi's work on Belmont's Revenge. It's one of my favorite Game Boy soundtracks, so check it out if you get a chance.
During the 16-bit era, Castlevania actually had entries on all three major systems. I'm going to start off our next music block with the first Castlevania game for a 16-bit system, Simon's Theme, Stage 1 and 2 BGM, from Super Castlevania 4 for the Super Nintendo, composed by Masanori Adachi and Taro Kudo. I'll follow that up with Iron Blue Intention, Stage 4, from Castlevania Bloodlines for the Genesis, which is a very important game in Castlevania music history. This track is from composer Michiro Yamane, who'd go on to be the signature composer for the franchise, and this is the first game in the series that she worked on. Yamane has actually done enough Castlevania games that I could have devoted an entire episode just to her work on the franchise, and it'd definitely be worth listening to. We will hear several more tracks from her later, and she's all over the bonus episode. Moving on, it'll be Bloodlines from Castlevania Dracula X for the SNES, composed by Tomoya Tomita, Masanari Iwata, Harumi Ueko, and Masahiko Kimura. Dracula X is a loose, inferior remake of Castlevania Rondo of Blood for the PC Engine CD, and I'm putting this specific track here so you can hear it in contrast to its original version, which is Overture from Rondo of Blood. The sound from the PC Engine CD is much richer, owing to the Redbook audio used by tons of CD-based games. I'm going to close out the block with Picture of a Ghost Ship, also from Rondo of Blood. I couldn't find individual song credits, but the entire Rondo of Blood soundtrack is credited to Akira Souji, Keizo Nakamura, Tomoko Sano, and Mikio Saito.
I think I played enough songs that I should do a recap here. So those songs were Simon's Theme, Stage 1 and 2 BGM from Super Castlevania 4, Iron Blue Intention from Castlevania Bloodlines, Bloodlines from Castlevania Dracula X, Overture from Castlevania Rondo of Blood, and finally, Picture of a Ghost Ship, also from Rondo of Blood. And now for a word from our sponsor. Hey kids, it's me, Lamenti the Gravestone, here to sell you some Doom Loops. That's right, Doom Loops are the gothic part of your balanced breakfast. Doom Loops' flavors of charcoal and salty ham are the best reason to disturb your blissful slumber and embrace this wretched waking existence. For a limited time, every box of Doom Loops comes with a free pack of clove cigarettes. Shove some Doom Loops into your hungry maw today. There aren't a lot of Castlevania games for the 32-bit consoles, but that's okay, because the most important entry for this console generation is arguably the best game in the whole franchise. I am, of course, talking about Castlevania Symphony of the Night for the PlayStation and also the Saturn, which is a direct sequel to Castlevania Rondo of Blood, and which also nearly didn't come out in North America because Sony didn't want 2D games released for the PlayStation. Fortunately, good taste prevailed and we wound up getting it, because it is an incredible game. Seriously, y'all, Symphony of the Night is so good. It's so good that even now, 25 years later, it holds up perfectly. Alongside Super Metroid, it's one of the two games that codified and named the Metroidvania genre, where you explore a big 2D environment and progressively get new abilities to go deeper into the world until you finally explored the whole thing. It established the tropes and model for the Castlevania series on the portables for the next 20 years. And finally, it gave us a great end credits song in I Am The Wind, which was the subject of my April Fool's 2023 episode. You can go back and check that one out if you'd like. Michiru Yamane was back to compose all of Symphony of the Night on her own, and she turned in one of the greatest soundtracks of the 32-bit era. I'm limiting myself to just two songs, but they're both bangers. First up, it'll be The Tragic Prince, also sometimes called Young Nobleman of Sadness, because you can translate the Japanese title in either way, and it's still valid. After that, it'll be Crystal Teardrops. Fun fact, I had three hours of music in my original track list for this episode, and I had to cut it down and cut it down and cut it down for time. My notes for this track literally had DO NOT CUT written in all capital letters, which tells you how good I think it is. It's an absolutely gorgeous track from one of Symphony's cave sections. Enjoy!
There are a handful of Castlevania titles in the PlayStation 2 era, but the franchise never really stuck the landing transitioning to 3D after delivering the masterpiece that was Symphony of the Night. So, I'm not going to cover those titles, and instead, I'm moving to the Game Boy Advance, where the Castlevania franchise delivered a bunch of great 2D games that were modeled after Symphony. You can check out all of these today in the Castlevania Advance collection for modern consoles and PCs, and I'd encourage you to pick that up and give it a try. These games are overlooked gems. I'm going to play a block of three tracks from the Game Boy Advance entries in the series, one for each game that was released for Nintendo's little handheld. First up, I'll play Awake from Castlevania Circle of the Moon, one of the Game Boy Advance launch titles. This is a good game, and it's best played on anything that's not the original Game Boy Advance hardware, because it's dark as night, and if you don't have a backlit screen or a TV, you're missing about half the stuff on the screen. Unless you're playing Castlevania outside on a sunny day, of course. And does anyone really want to do that? Anyway, this song was composed by Sotaro Tojima, although Hiroshi Mitsuoka and Taro Kudo are also credited on the soundtrack. Second, it'll be Successor of Fate, Juiced Belmont's theme from Castlevania Harmony of Dissonance, composed by Soshiro Hokai. The motif in this song shows up elsewhere in the soundtrack, and it's a good solid exploring the castle track. And finally, it'll be Clock Tower from Castlevania Aria of Sorrow, composed by series mainstay Michiro Yamane. While she did compose a handful of tracks for Harmony of Dissonance, Yamane was the lead composer on Aria of Sorrow, and we're all better off for it.
Just like the Game Boy Advance, Castlevania saw a trilogy of Nintendo DS games. The first one was Dawn of Sorrow, which was released during the time when every DS game had to include a two-word subtitle, where the first word began with D and the second word began with S. You guys remember that? Good times. I'm going to play two songs from this game. First up, it'll be Dracula's Tears, which is a good exploration background track composed by Michiro Yamane. And second, it'll be Equipment Discussion, which is a great example of how Castlevania sometimes gets a softer side. That one was composed by Masahiko Kimura. I'm going to skip playing songs from Portrait of Ruin because I'm already running low on time, but I am going to play Chapel Hidden in Smoke from the third Castlevania DS game called Order of Ecclesia. I liked this soundtrack a lot, so much so that on our bonus episode, there are a whopping 10 songs from it. It seems like every time I liked a song for this episode, it was from this game, and the only reason I'm not playing more stuff from it is that I had too much ground to cover within my self-imposed time constraints. So, check out the bonus episode to hear a lot more from it, and don't sleep on this soundtrack, because it is good. Chapel Hidden in Smoke was once again composed by the great Michiro Yamane.
finally, I have one more game I want to talk about. It's not actually a Castlevania game, even though it might as well be. In March of 2014, longtime Castlevania series producer Koji Igarashi left Konami, and about a year later, he posted a project on Kickstarter to make a new Metroidvania game that would be a spiritual successor to the 2D platformers from the series. The Kickstarter went incredibly well, reaching $1.5 million in pledges on the first day, and setting a new Kickstarter record of $5.5 million by its end, blowing away all of its stretch goals. There were a few delays in development, but in June 2019, backers finally got to play Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. I personally backed the project, and although the delays were a little frustrating at times, the end product was worth the wait. Ritual of the Night is an absolutely stellar Metroidvania game, and something I'd recommend to every fan of the genre. It's on every platform, so go out and give it a try if you haven't played it and you like Metroidvania games. Part of Ritual of the Night's development was that, metaphorically, Igarashi got the band back together, gathering multiple Castlevania series mainstays like artist Ayami Kojima to work on the game. And, most importantly for our part, Igarashi got Michiro Yamane to return and contribute to the soundtrack. I'm going to play two songs from Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. First up, it'll be Theme of Bloodstained, written by Michiro Yamane. I'll also play Exorcism from composer Keisuke Ito, which is a cool mixture of traditional Japanese flute and rock music.
that's the show. If you want to reach me, you can find me on Threads, Tumblr, or Instagram as Shujin Academy VGM Club. I'm also on Mastodon at Shujin Academy VGM Club at Mastodon.coffee. My username on Discord is Professor Tom, and I've joined Blue Sky as Shujin Academy.bsky.social. All episodes of the show are posted to my YouTube channel, which you can find by searching for Shujin Academy VGM Club. You can email me at Shujin Academy VGM Club at gmail.com. All my links to everything are available on my link tree at linktr.e slash Shujin Academy. Please leave me a five-star rating on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you're finding this episode. New episodes are released once or twice a month, depending on how often I get them done, and they premiere on Thursday mornings on your favorite podcatcher and on 8bits.co, the internet's number one game music radio station. I'm also now appearing on Terra Player, the new app that's a destination for gaming podcasts and other content, so you can check me out there. Special thanks for this episode goes out to fellow VGM podcaster Jameson of Bar Silence Podcast for contributing amazing cover art. You can and should find Bar Silence wherever you download podcasts, and check out his website at barsilence.com. Thanks also go out to Save Point Sam for voicing Lamenti the Gravestone. Thanks also, also, go out to generous show patron Rick L., who suggested the idea for this episode and gave me a huge amount of money to do it. Well, he suggested the idea. He didn't actually give me any money at all, but I did it anyway. Finally, thanks go out to our sponsor Longtones, an experimental electronic jazz music project. Check them out on Spotify or find their SoundCloud page in the show notes. I mentioned earlier that there were a ton of great Castlevania tracks that I wanted to feature. I had to cut most of them so that this episode didn't go on for four hours, so I'm going to do a special bonus episode that's just those extra tracks. Look forward to it next week. Same Transylvanian time, same Transylvanian channel. And now, today's outro track. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, stop this. That's I Am the Wind from Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and I think I played enough of that particular song back in April for my April Fool's Day episode. Let's try this whole outro track thing again. I'm going to do a little departure here, and instead of playing a game track, I'm actually going to play us out with an arrangement. The fine folks over at Overclocked Remix have put out three volumes of a series called Vampire Variations, all full of arrangements of Castlevania tunes. There are a ton of great songs on these records, and I'm particularly fond of Brandon Strader's arrangements, which feature some great rock guitar work and also samples of Nicolas Cage going nuts. You can find those OC Remix compilations at ocremix.org, and check out Mr. Strader's tracks Vampire's Kiss on Volume 1 and Bringing Out the Dead from Volume 3, and I'm going to play us out with Season of the Witch, Strader's arrangement of Together Forever from Castlevania Bloodlines, found on Vampire Variations Volume 2. The original composition was from Michiro Yamane, and the very effective vocal samples here are from Nicolas Cage's appearance in the film Season of the Witch. Thanks for listening. I'm Professor Tom, and I'll see you next time on Shujin Academy VGM Club. You pledge your life to the cause. For God, not for this.
be decided. Vows to God, not the man who murdered.